So you've probably heard about the positives of microdosing. You know that just right feeling when your body and mind are at peace? Like after a workout or a nice long shower, when you're relaxed, focused, and a little energized. Those that microdose have done so for a variety of reasons. It might be for pain management, to reduce anxiety, maybe to get in the zone creatively, focus to get some work done, or they might just need it to wind down the day and get some restful sleep. That's what I use it for. And when I do, I take Cotton Candy Kush and Granddaddy Sour OG. They both work. They help put me to sleep and help me stay there. Today's show is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code LEWIS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description, but again, that's microdose.com and code Lewis. This could could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello there, and welcome to the 140th edition of Lewis Black's Rantcast entitled World Elephant Day. Yes, it is. It is World Elephant Day. I'm not kidding. That's what I just got an email telling me. I wouldn't have known. Um, And it's August 12th. That's when I'm recording this. And uh, it seems like an apt title, apropos, if you will, uh, another one of those words you, uh, I find myself rarely using, but it works today because it's World Elephant Day. I've actually uh, been on a safari. Yes, I know. I'm uh, certainly... uh, bragging here. I'm not bragging. I'm you, I'm telling you <laughs> that I went on a safari so that I can tell you that I was good, but near an elephant. I was near elephants. They were wandering about in the wild. Um, and one, a, a bull elephant, if you will, um, and seemed to be looking for love. And uh, yes, I said that, a <laughs> big bull elephant looking for love or whatever you call what elephants who have just kind of lost it because the, there's been a seminal backup and uh, he was cray cray and uh, came at us uh, when we saw him again. He kind of was wandering around a little, and then literally came at us and we had to turn that, uh, you know, the, what we were, the car we were in and, and uh, get the fuck out of there. We hauled ass and so did that fucking elephant. Because uh, that elephant, I think, wanted a piece of us, and who it might have started humping the, the the, uh, the 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 Range Rover or whatever the fuck we were in. <laughs> um, it's uh, bigger than the Range Rover, so that we could kind of uh, watch the animals from a distance, or sometimes <laughs> way too close. Uh, yeah, and I um I only bring this up because. Uh, in part, I'll be talking about it in uh, hopefully my act as I make my way around the country. I'll start to bring this in. I've been tr- uh, just have been a little remiss in not doing it. Uh, I want to talk about that safari because I learned a, a few important lessons being out there. I wanted to go to the Serengeti and I got there and there's a few things that I thought, boy, I really don't want to miss this uh, and in this lifetime. And uh, I was lucky enough to go with... Uh, my good friends and uh, who who've been on safaris before, and they had a really excellent uh, group that took us around. And it was a very small; it was just uh, four of us, and it was uh, really special and incredible. And I learned a lot. Was stunned by the views. Uh, also stunned by uh, how well World Elephant Day fits into this week. It's uh, perfect, really, to. Uh, describe what's been happening over this past week. We're talking about the elephants in the room. And there are a lot of elephants in the room. I mean, a ton of elephants in the room. It's summer. It's summer. It's summer. Okay? There shouldn't be any elephants in the room. Okay? Except for the whatever the steak is that you're preparing or the hot dogs, the burgers, the the uh, buns you're getting uh, ready to go out there with um, the what's ever on the plate, the sliced tomatoes, all of the great stuff that makes summer so fucking good and so much fun. And meanwhile, we're stuck 
you know, in what appears to be a, a suffocating room of elephants. I mean, uh, Donald Trump and uh, all of his uh, stuff that he's bringing along, all that baggage, all those trials and girl, of course he didn't do it. Uh, the Congress that seems to be following him around and yelling and screaming, both sides, both sides. You go quack, quack, honk, honk, burp, burp, shut the fuck up. Go finish the 11 bills that need to be done, 11 of them, so that we uh, have a, an economy that keeps rolling and don't have to watch the, uh, oh, yeah, the banks are kind of uh, not getting good ratings now either, are they? And that's another elephant in the room. And Hunter Biden, that big swollen elephant in the room. And, uh, oh, but they didn't get the pressure. I just do it. Just keep it out of our face. All right. They're going to go through with this. Stop honking and, and squealing and send a send a better recipe for uh, a potato salad. And I had a great one <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, recently uh, in New York. But I'm not even going to go into that because I can't because I can't spend time thinking about it because there's more elephants in the room. Climate change. Big elephant in the room. Keeps you fucking pummeling us. And I still have friends who don't believe it. Well, it doesn't fucking matter. It does matter. Okay? It matters a goddamn lot. It's an unbelievable. Okay? But, you know, and how do we know this? Because M- M- Maui, and that's the other thing I was going to call it. Maori, Maui, 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 sorry, Maui. Paradise is burning. And that's what's happening there. And our paradise, uh, which we all lived on, and uh, the, the, the paradise of living in the United States with all the freedoms we have, the uh, uh, everything that we had going for us, all of it, okay? It's burning. It's been burning for a while, okay? And enough is fucking enough. And now you've got to, uh, right in your face, you know, you can't escape. I have friends, you know, I'm going to Maui. It's beautiful there. I have friends who live there. And I'm, I've always been, you know, just a touch jealous. It's not a place I would want to live, but you kind of go, wow, it must be incredible to wake up every day in what is, uh, you know, one of the paradises that we have in this country where you could live. And now, fire and uh, 80 are dead. And um, it's another elephant in the room. And, uh, it's really brutal, and we're gonna have to. And then how? And then also, how do how how does this happen? There's no prep for it. We're getting to the point. Literally, they were at the point that the day before, the week before, they the uh, they didn't notice that there might be all of a sudden a fucking flame, you know, my my the, 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 that it could ignite and burn the shit out of it, burn the shit out of. Uh, that the uh, the city whose name I can't fucking remember, because there's so many elephants in my head, okay, stomping around, burn down the 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 uh, the, the 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 city of Lahaina, and uh, a, apparently a popular tourist destination. I'm I'm I performed, by, and that even may have been where I was performing years ago, um, and I was supposed to go back again and couldn't uh, because I was uh, not. I was under the weather, and uh, so it made it impossible. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's par- you can't even escape to paradise anymore. We were living in our own paradises, and, and, and grant you that people, uh, not everyone is living in paradise, but the option of, of, of the opportunity uh, is there or was there, and now uh, it, it, it appears that... Uh, we, we, we've lost the concept of sharing, which is what made, when I was growing up, it seemed um, to be uh, possible for all of us to have just a little bit of taste of what paradise is. Gone. Because it's burnt. No place to hide. No place to run. No place to hide. Oh, yeah, I forgot. What are the other elephants in the room? Uh, uh, another massive one who kind of leaves the room and then kind of comes back and we can't seem to get rid of him. Uh, We can't get him out of the room. I mean, let alone get rid of him. It's Clarence Thomas. Once again, again, three quarters of a two, was it 250, 60, $75,000 for an RV that his uh, very wealthy 
very conservative friend who had an agenda, apparently, you know, was able to get to him so that he and Jenny, uh, Ginny uh, could drive around the country uh, and be amongst the folk, as he said himself, amongst the folk. Wow. Because that's where he likes to be in his two hundred and sixty five, seventy five thousand dollar RV. If you fucking over the top, couldn't possibly have afforded it, got it. Uh, but it certainly it makes it a lot easier when you got a pal who's got a chunk of change. And it certainly worked out for him. And so along with Clarence Thomas being in the room, we now got the whole Supreme Court in there because Justice Roberts won't help in terms of uh, kind of putting together some sort of uh, ethics that should be applied to those who are in the Supreme Court. Uh, Similar ethics that should be applied to those in Congress. Nobody seems to follow them, but pretend for us. Pretend, make a show of it, okay? Well, I didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong, please. He did something wrong, and so have a ton of the others. Okay, so can we get it straightened out? All right? So we can move on as a nation, okay? And, and so we can, uh, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, put an end to the, to, to the fires burning down paradise? Shh. Fucking unbelievable. I'm going to take a second here. So to clarify, he, he, we're not sure if it was bought. We do know it was a loan. Uh, it was a loan that he couldn't have gotten at the time because he was so much in debt. Uh, a bank wouldn't have given him a loan. So his friend stepped forward. That makes it tough. And we all kind of have friends who would help us out. But he's a Supreme Court justice. And his friend... Um, is uh, it was uh, very wealthy and uh, worked in the healthcare industry, so I have to check on whatever it was that uh, that Thomas might have ruled on in terms of the healthcare industry, um, and I don't have the time or the energy for that. I just know that uh, apparently the loan was given and at a very very favorable rate that would allow him to return it, and then nine years later. It is said that uh, it was paid off, but it is not sure if it was paid off. There's been no mention of really if it was paid off or uh, if they just said, hey, it's okay, we're clear, and I made the money back anyway because I work in the healthcare industry, and uh, they don't stop throwing money at me. So you're set, Clarence. Unbelievable. The whole thing is just unbelievable. Uh, He's the last elephant I want in the room right now. I'm going to move on to fun stuff. If that's possible. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap this up uh, and move on to fun, I think. <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, and uh, I will, um, and I really, um, I don't even know how to approach what's happened in Maui or what to say, except that it saddens me. And I, I hope that uh, they get all the help they can and that as usual, we, um, we, 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 we pour out uh, uh, everything that we can to help them. It's the one thing we're good at. When people need help, we're there, and so let's be there. I certainly will try to be. That's what I got in terms of that. It's time to move on to what I did this last week, which was uh, I just got back yesterday from Portland, Maine, where if you've not been to, uh, I would consider it this, in a way the sister city to Portland, Oregon. They are both very hip, a word that uh, I rarely use, but uh, they are, and uh, unique um, and uh, different in their own ways. Uh, There seems to be a little bit more of a a blue-collar edge, I think, in uh, Portland, Maine, and it's got a a quality to it that really is extraordinary, and uh, uh, there's a kind of a late 60s feel to it, along with the with a, with a smack dab in the middle of the 21st century feel. And it's always great to be there. I mean, always uh, phenomenal restaurants. And uh, it, I'm going to mention two because it's, it, it, but one is really just a great bar with some, some terrific oysters and some nice little small dishes. It's, it's a sister uh, to uh, the other one. This is Blythe and Burrow. Uh, and, uh, they had a cocktail there, and I rarely drink cocktails now unless something really fascinates me. 
a dandelion infused whiskey, a few other ingredients and a smoke infused, put in a little bottle. They put the smoke into it and tap it off. And uh, then they give you a bit of it and tell you, you know, we drink this and then we're going to um, pour in the rest and it, they will taste different. It's like two different cocktails. It is. It's really, uh, uh, I drank a lot of whiskey in my time uh, is my brother who, if he were around today, would attest. And uh, uh, this was it really just extraordinary. Um, I haven't been dr drinking much whiskey and it was really uh, a little too tempting <laughs> to, to have a few more after that. And that's Blythe and Burrow. The other, Bia Becky, is just a restaurant that I've been to with some some friends and I've been there about four times and it is spectacular. I mean, it just gets better and better and better. They had a tequila um, cocktail there and it was stunning. Uh, tequila has been kept on my cocktail list and is on my drink list because it clears my head and I am able to focus when I'm on it. And it is a, uh, that uh, this um, cocktail, the, the for those who love the taste of tequila, you might go, oh, well, this it took away the taste. It, it, it did not taste like tequila. It, it tasted like something that you really uh, just wanted to sip uh, and you didn't know what it was and you just knew it was fucking flavorful and tasty and can I get a tumbler of this to take home? Uh, I don't usually, I'm not one of those slow drinkers. I usually, especially if it's good, I'm yum, 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 yum. This was, you know, I just kept wanting to save it. And it was uh, really in the food, through the roof. Well worth your time. Portland, uh, seriously, from I've stumbled into all sorts of places there. And uh, they really give a shit about what they're eating. It may have to do with the winter. It also may have to do with they're on the East Coast a lot of Chefs flee New York and get up there and say, fuck it, I'm going to relax and uh, and uh, work with some really great fish for a while. Not the people, but the, 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 uh, the, the harbor, which brings forth a bounty of really great seafood and uh, the restaurants and the pubs, everything. I, I can't tell you more. I mean, it's just go there. If you've not been there. Just go there. I promise you, you're gonna you're gonna love it. And also, uh, I will mention the uh, the main souvenir shop where uh, I was uh, given this. So I'm not. I've I've, uh, I've been in there from the the, the, the the a number of times, and it's just completely unique. Uh, a number of uh, main artists and who have a really a, a view that's askew. Uh, really have uh, created some wonderful, wonderful works. Uh, T-shirts like this, the first man on the moon with what looks to be, what could be the Portland flag. And they claim that this is actually the real photograph of what took place on the moon, not that other one. This is what really happened. Um, but it's the main souvenir shop right on the corner. And uh, all of it made by Mainers and... Uh, well worth your time, really well worth your time. They've got hats in there with squirrels doing stuff on them, and uh, uh, raccoons and all sorts of things. And uh, I uh, was was thrilled to spend time there again. Uh, um, and my um, who now my friend Kevin uh, runs the place. He, he's now my friend. He's it's it's his his place. He had a vision, and it's uh, really. Um, it's really working, and the it's given uh, a, a number of artists uh, an outlet and uh, and a living, which is just terrific. The, the name of the artist who does the hats the uh, the hats have these little uh, things <laughs> uh, on them that are based on her paintings. Flynn Costello, and I just want to give a shout out to her because her stuff really tickles the the hell out of me and. Uh, so if you get a chance, look online for the main, the main souvenir shop. And uh, check out also, uh, while you're there, Flynn Costello's work. Also, you can uh, follow her, too. It's, uh, she's uh, 
<laughs> she just, her stuff just makes me laugh. And uh, she's marvelous. Uh, her work is just, her work is marvelous. She's marvelous too, actually. So uh, I do hope uh, that made for a fun week. Also, I got to spend some uh, time up there with Peter Costas. He was the uh, commentator uh, for the CBS for CBS Golf when it was really done well and it was interesting to watch. And it, he did a, just a great job uh, giving us insight into the game and does a great job uh, as a teacher. And, uh, uh, and I, I try to be as good a student as I can, but I'm not as good a student as he is a teacher. He is, uh, but he's certainly helped me uh, enjoy the game of golf more. And so I was up there taking uh, some time with him just to hang out and, uh, and, uh, and take some lessons. I desperately, desperately need it because I suck at times. And, uh, and each time I go there, I get a little bit better, just a touch. And, uh, uh, it was certainly a lot of fun, and um, and that really was great. And uh, also, he does a podcast with Gary McCord, who was also uh, doing CBS Golf with him. Uh, and uh, they CBS, in their brilliance, let both of them go so that they could really just destroy what they had there and uh, save some money uh, by making it shittier, uh, making their coverage shittier. Uh, but the two of them now have on YouTube... Uh, uh, Costas and McCord uh, off their rockers and uh, well worth your time, especially this week, because uh, uh, I'm on it with uh, also another uh, with uh, another friend, um, Maury Povich and uh, uh, Jeff Stilson, I believe, is on that. And uh, because uh, it's, it's, uh, we did it a while back, I can't fucking remember who else was was on that segment with us. Uh, uh, Gary McCord was not there, but it was really uh, great to sit down, and it's uh, worth your time catching uh, that if you if you like golf, and even if you don't, uh, just listening to them chat it is is terrific. And then uh, watching me and Maury <laughs> makes it makes it a special day for everybody. <laughs> and we did a couple of paternity tests on on many people in the village, and it really turned into being a great show. No, it was, it was really good. So I hope you get a chance to catch that. And uh, I forgot about the Iowa State Fair, which I should have talked about, but fuck them. Uh, the place that people show up, uh, candidates for the presidency, and pretend to act like regular people, it's disgusting and has to stop. Okay? I would rather they just covered the fatty foods that they're serving there. Just the, the tremendous variety of fatty foods. And I'd like to leave with that. The, the joy of, of summer and fatty foods and spending time with good friends. Um, that's what makes summer good. That's what makes summer wonderful. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully yours is good and, and gets better. And that maybe August usually, which is the worst of our months, maybe this one kind of flips around. And, and into September, we get some real moments of respite. And they all... All of those assholes, all those elephants in the room, shut the fuck up. Thanks for spending time with me. We've got some great uh, rants as always. Um, they do a better job right now than I do because I need an audience to yell and scream. I do. You guys keep me on track. And really, uh, I just want you to know I take, uh, there's a, I get a great deal of joy out of spending time with you. It drives me nuts trying to, to be funnier without uh, your presence. And so uh, even though I hear laughter and no one is there, um, I, I hope that in one way or another, I still tickle you with my stupidity. Uh, thanks for spending time with me. Um, I mean that. It's a privilege and a pleasure spending time with you, that's for sure. Have a good week or a semblance thereof. So you've probably heard about the positives of microdosing. You know that just right feeling when your body and mind are at peace? Like after a workout or a nice long shower, when you're relaxed, focused, and a little energized. Those that microdose have done so for a variety of reasons, 
It might be for pain management, to reduce anxiety, maybe to get in the zone creatively, focus to get some work done, or they might just need it to wind down the day and get some restful sleep. That's what I use it for. And when I do, I take Cotton Candy Kush and Granddaddy Sour OG. They both work. They help put me to sleep and help me stay there. Today's show is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code LEWIS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description, but again, that's microdose.com and code Lewis. Here's a quick little rant from Gavin Laboski about our illustrious Supreme Court. Doesn't Alito's defense that is hanging with these billionaires didn't influence his decisions presume the billionaires want to hang with him because they like him? Which can't be true. (laughs) Thank you, Gavin. (laughs) Thanks for sharing. From Robert Mendenhall, slavery provided benefits? Really? Oh, let's not stop there, Governor DeSantis. How about these benefits? Hmm? Human trafficking victims were able to learn alternative ways to earn money. Physical abuse victims learned valuable consumer skills about effective painkillers. Or since I know how to use makeup to hide bruises, maybe I could become a makeup artist. Mental and emotional abuse victims learned about the variety of career choices in mental health fields. Wow. Robert, one step further, one toke over the line. I appreciate it. Wow. The makeup artist. Yep. Why not? Why the fuck not? Thanks again, Robert. Spencer Hunley uh, has gone off on a subsidiary of Amazon. Yes, sirree. So I'm at work, and because I woke up that morning as a complete dipshit, I forgot my lunch. The shops nearby were closed. The vending machines were empty because, of course, they were. Having never been in one before, I decided to check out the only place open nearby, Whole Foods. I'm not proud of that, being the liberal elitist scum that I am. But I was hungry, so I took my walk of shame through the door, but Before I even stepped inside, I was assaulted fragrantly. Whole Foods smells as though Gwyneth Paltrow's pussy took a shit in an herb garden. I know that's not the nicest way to put it, but God damn was that place pungent. I've heard all the jokes and memes about whole paycheck but nothing prepared me for the tsunami of smells that blasted in my direction as though someone obliterated my olfactory nerves with shotgun shells soaked in essential oils. You like strawberries, garlic, hard cheeses, patchouli, coconut oil, kale, dark chocolate, crazy glue, new car smell, old car smell, cool ranch Doritos, all that and more when you walk in our door. I got a smoothie, and for the record, it was flavorless, chunky, and goopy. Not impressed. However, I wasn't the only one new to Whole Foods that day. As I was leaving, I passed by the old codger, yelling at one of the workers, $7 for oatmeal? Fuck you. Yeah, Seven dollars, seven goddamn dollars for a single bowl of fucking oatmeal. No flavors, nothing extra, not even crunch berries. Thanks a lot, Gwyneth. Thanks a lot, Spencer. I I don't think I've ever been in a Whole Foods. Wow, now I'm, I don't think I'll be going to one. I liked it goopy. <laughs> wow. Well done. 
Well said. Kelly Stearns is ranting about something no one has ranted about. You know, it's certainly not one that I've ever heard. Pretty risky, really, to, to go in this direction. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be reading it. And it always excites me when someone uh, really, well, I'll just get to it. Thank you, Kelly. Here's my rant about suicide. The other day, I was taking a walk, and I went past the last place I talked to a friend of mine who killed themselves. Now, first off, I want to say, don't kill yourself. Really, don't. But, but, but if you're going to anyway, I'd like to give you some helpful hints. Don't have one of those backwards going away parties that suicidal people have. Do not leave gifts behind for us. Why are you leaving us gifts? You're the one going away. You think you're being thoughtful? Really, your head is just crammed full of thoughts. Those are not the same thing. And really, shouldn't you be saving your money instead of buying us gifts? We all have that 5% wiggle room on whether we're going to get into heaven or not. They say you can't take it with you, but what if you can? Hmm? Wouldn't you rather have a little cash in your pocket in case you need to bribe St. Peter a little? Err on the side of caution. Besides, when you tiptoe over to our house in the middle of the night and leave us, that big screen TV on the porch, it doesn't turn out how you think. When we go out in the morning and find that we're the happiest we've been in years, And then 30 seconds later, we get the phone call that you're dead and we're the saddest. We've been in even longer. It sets us up for an emotional roller coaster that's going to last the rest of our lives. So don't, don't, don't kill yourself. But if you're going to anyway, and if you insist on one of those backwards going away parties, here's what I want you to do. Get a plastic bag, go through all the kitchen cabinets you haven't looked through in years, pull out those cool whip containers without lids, stick those in the bag. You know, that plastic bowl you microwaved with tomato sauce in it has that horrible ring around it now. Put that in the bag. Take that kind of stuff over to our porch in the middle of the night. That way, when we get up in the morning and find it, There is no way we'll be on an emotional roller coaster for the rest of our lives. No way. When we find that in the morning, our only thought is going to be, why did you leave this bag of crap on my porch? Then we get the call 30 seconds later. He's dead? Mm -hmm. We weren't that close anyway. Probably get over this in like a week. Now, these tips have been for the nice people who commit suicide. There are also a lot of not nice people who commit suicide. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting. I've, I've just, it's for the nice people who suicide. I just hadn't heard it in that way. Maybe I, it's the way in which it's spoken about now. I had a friend who uh, killed himself. And, uh, but I always thought it was commit suicide. So now these tips have been for the nice people who suicide. There are also a lot of nice people who suicide. You read about them in the papers. The kind who take out their ex-wife or neighbor or grocery store first. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I laughed at that. But You guys can kill yourself, but you need a different set of tips because you're doing it wrong. You're way too old-fashioned. Ladies, first does not apply to suicide or your ex-wife. Be the man, be the leader, show her how it's done. Go first. And in that situation, you should leave a gift. You should leave a big TV on the porch. Not because she deserves it. We know she cheated on you. We know she's horrible. We know these kids don't even look like you. But we also know how she and your ex-mother-in-law always badmouth you. We know how they always make everyone dislike you and think you're a bad guy. So if you do leave the big color screen TV on the porch, you've changed what everyone else will say about you. 
Now you're already planning on driving three states overnight to stalk her and leave a dead rat on the porch, right? Well, that's a good start. Just tweak that a tiny bit. Maybe leave the TV instead. Or if you like the others and want to save your money to bribe St. Peter, and that might be a good idea, then forget about the TV and just do some good deeds instead. Remember all those chores she always nags you to do? Go around outside and do them. Save your money. Remember St. Peter? Then when she gets on her high horse and tries to tell all her friends how horrible you were after you die, they're going to say back, but Gloria, would a bad guy have driven three states overnight to take out your trash? And Gloria, would a bad guy have driven three states overnight to dig you a brand new vegetable garden? And Gloria, would a bad guy have driven driven three states overnight all the way over to your mother's house to not only fix that door that he always kicked in, but install a brand new shiny kick plate at the bottom also? I think not. Wow, Kelly. I guess I'm wondering, did you have a, I guess you had a friend who killed him. I mean, I've just committed suicide or suicide. Wow, I mean, uh, that's a, kind of a interesting, way more, way interesting way to look at it. I did have a friend um, who, uh, I guess it's a, more than a year now, uh, did uh, suicide, commit suicide, and uh, it was rough. I'd, I'd known people who who died, and it was, uh, but I and. Uh, but they were people, you know, who, who like from a drug overdose or something, and it wasn't meant to be the suicide, but you knew kind of that they were headed in the direction. They weren't killing themselves, but they were doing it slowly. And so you weren't shocked at their death. But when someone just out and out uh, takes the pills to, to do that, whew, boy, it, 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 it threw, threw all of us, all me and my friends for a loop. I mean, it, it was, you know, you, 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 I was trying to get through what, uh, you know, the pandemic, and all of a sudden it just threw me back. And I want to thank you for, for sharing this, and I don't know if it'll help anybody out there, but it certainly it made me laugh. I didn't, this is that one time I, that I laughed out loud, but you, uh, you hit a chord. And I appreciate it, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's rant cast was created and hosted by me, Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.